the main component of the gaseous phase is carbon monoxide and that of particulate phase is nicotine and tar. Coming to carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide presence adversely affects the oxygen delivery to the tissue. Okay. The inhalation of carbon monoxide leads to formation of carboxy hemoglobin. Normally, in a normal individual without smoking, the concentration of carboxy hemoglobin is less than 1.5%. But in smokers, it increases to 2 to 12%. Why are worried about carboxy hemoglobin? Carbon monoxide has about 304 greater affinity to hemoglobin than oxygen. So, carboxy hemoglobin is going to be favored over oxy hemoglobin which is very important in oxygen delivery to the tissue. Why you are worried about carboxy hemoglobin? The normal sigmoid shape curve of oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve will be shifted to the left side. Here you can see the carboxy hemoglobin which is shifted to the left. By doing that, the oxygen delivery to the tissue is affected. Now coming to nicotine, a typical cigarette almost contains about 2 milligram of nicotine. The off life of nicotine is about 30 minutes and it is metabolized by cytochrome 450 to various constants. The most important thing is going to be the cotton which remains in the bloodstream for about 20 hours. This nicotine is readily absorbed across the alveolar membrane which plays a very big role in lung injury and the sympathetomimetic effect of nicotine increases the heart rate, cardiac output and there is a risk of tachyarrhythmias. At higher doses, the simulant effect of nicotine decreases. High doses have a sedative and a depressant effect. Not only that, it causes the blood-brain barrier and enters the cerebral circulation within 20 seconds. The chemical structure of nicotine, which is red in color, is very similar to acetylcholine. Therefore, it plays a very important role in cerebral neurotransmission. Now, when you smoke, this nicotine goes and stimulates the nicotine acetylcholine receptors and it causes the release of various neurotransmitters like noradrenaline, adrenaline, vasopressin, serotonin, dopamine and beta endorphin. This leads to addictive effects in human. So, nicotine is addictive. Now, coming to tar. The nicotine free remainder of the particulate phase which is grey in color is called the tar. It is the dark sticky substance which forms when the tobacco burns. The chemical component in tar and their toxicity vary widely across tobacco from different sources. The measurement of tar is therefore a crude measure of the toxic potential of the tobacco product. With this measurement, you can classify as high, medium or low yield cigarette. So, measurement of tar is going to decide whether it is going to be high, medium or low yield 